Previously on MasterChef. Make us one incredible birthday cake. In the pressure test, some home cooks fail to rise to the occasion. You have the ugliest cake in America. But it tastes good. Bringing the party to an end for Charlie and Amanda. Tonight, Woo! the top 12 are faced with replicating Gordon Ramsay's greatest hits. This is going to be impossible. It's the toughest challenge of their lives. Ah! And while some home cooks reach new heights. That I want to run to Vegas with. Others crash to an all-time low. We make eye contact with me? You wanted us to taste this? That's like the most supportive real talk I can give you. Oh, my. Welcome, guys. Come on down. Let's go. Being in the top 12 is awesome. Frankly, I never thought that I would make it this far. And I'm here because I want my own food truck so bad. I have a daughter. I'm going to leave her a legacy. I'm going to leave her businesses and also show her you shouldn't be scared to go after your dreams. We know that you guys have given up so much to be here, left your loved ones, children, and families back at home. And we think that you deserve a special culinary treat. Tonight, you are all going to enjoy a dinner in the MasterChef restaurant, a dinner prepared personally for you by Chef Gordon Ramsay. Tonight, I have made for you all a dish that has really helped put me on the culinary map. My restaurants have served just over 300,000 of these delicious dishes. It is my world famous beef wellington with potato puree and carrots. I knew it. I knew it. Now, pay attention. And trust me, this is not going to be easy because your next challenge is to recreate this stunning dish. We're looking for the exact replica, identical plating and identical taste. Please, everybody, head into the restaurant and enjoy a sensational Gordon Ramsay dinner. Please, go ahead. Head in. Thank you. Bon appetit. Thank you, Chef. Enjoy, Katrina. <laughs> Stephen, enjoy. Oh, hello, darling. Thank you for joining me. Nothing oh. but the best for you, my love. <laughs> Oh, my God, it's coming. I'm so excited. Thank you. Do you see how beautiful that is? Thank you so much. To recreate a Gordon Ramsay signature dish, this is huge pressure. I'm looking at all the layers, the puff pastry, the crepe, the mushroom, like I'm a surgeon. Then when you get it all in, it's the most perfect bite in the entire culinary world. Mm. The idea is literally to slice, see that nice puff pastry. Yeah, look at that crumble. Yeah. And then that. Oh, Look at so that cook. Beautiful. Pastry, followed by that savory crepe, and then that amazing wild mushroom duxelle, prosciutto, and then, of course, a stunning medium rare filet. The tenderloin, it's cooked to perfect. perfect yeah. Perfectly. Now, as the filet cools down, it's been brushed with Dijon mustard. So, heat with the red wine sauce, the cream mashed potatoes, oh. and the carrots. Carrots are braised with some thyme, garlic, a little bit of sugar to die for. Ooh. As a vegetarian in this competition, I feel like I'm at a complete disadvantage. So I'm sitting with Chris because he knows a lot about proteins and I know I could pick his brain and be like, what do you taste? What kind of cut is it? <laughs> You've murdered that thing. You could feel every muscle fiber breaking apart. You get to the stringy prosciutto, you get to the tough beef. The contrast in texture, surface areas. This is a purely technique-based dish right now. Wow. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. So delicious. You could at least wear, like, a coat. Uh, well, if I'd have known. <laughs> Now that you've all enjoyed a five-star dinner from Gordon Ramsay, it's your turn to try and replicate Gordon's world-famous beef wellington. Nice. Let's do it. At your stations in the kitchen, you're going to find everything that you need to make us an exact replica of that dish that you just ate. When the challenge begins, you will be cooking next to the person you chose to have dinner with tonight. Your 60 minutes starts. <laughs> Let's go. Wow, this is a big one. Now, yeah. this is all about precision. There's nothing to hide behind. I'm hoping that everything they've tasted, they've remembered, and they're going to bring it back to their bench. This is an incredibly technical race against the clock. You have to multitask. So, rule number one, you get your fillet seared. 
beautiful sear. At the same time, in a pan next to it, reduce your red wine. Once your fillet's seared, lightly brush it with Dijon mustard. And set that in the fridge to get nice and cold so it starts to absorb that amazing marinade. Let me talk to you about the layers, because mm -hmm. that crepe needs to be made. Lots of chives in there, so it's a really nice, savoury crepe. Puff pastry goes on last. Your timing has to be so precise, and then you bring it all together. That beef wellington was the best meal I've ever had on earth. I really did pay attention and dissect that dish as I was eating it. Just gonna make sure that I'm managing my time because the last thing I wanna do is overcook this beef wellington. 36 minutes remaining, 24 gone, 36 remaining. Speed up, guys. Hi, Hethel. Hi. You're at a disadvantage, first off, yeah. because you don't eat beef. Correct. How I are you going to be able to recreate something that you haven't really had before? I think I touched everything. I felt almost like Rain Man, because I'm sitting there smelling and squishing and okay. feeling and inspecting heavily. OK. So it should be like blaring hot okay. for like 10 minutes. you got to make sure you yeah. can hear it, too, and you don't hear it, because there's no fat in the pan. Oh, so I need to All add right. butter. You can figure it out. Good Thank luck. you. Steven. Yes, sir. Uh, you're a technical man. You're a great thinker. Ha, ha. Are we seeing any grunts? Are we going to listen to any, uh, anything coming out? Every single day, I use every drop of energy in an organized fashion to do and get what I want. I've been doing that for the last 47 years. If we had met, like, 35 years ago, yes. we would be good friends right now. I think you're right. Uh. Nail it. Let's go. I have no idea how to do this. I have legitimately no idea how to do this. All of you, you've got 25 minutes to go. And in 10 minutes' time, you should have your Wellingtons in the oven. I have no idea. Oh, my god. Not looking good. Damn. Look at Katrina's. Can you see this? There's holes in that. I'm nervous. Now Katrina's doing the patch job. You Never can't do. put warm things on cold no. puff pastry. No. I don't know what the hell's going on. The puff pastry had to be thin, but there's like holes on each side and underneath. Ah. Uh. Katrina, what have you done? Show me. My beef wellington. It's oh, not Dear, oh, dear. I know. It's Turn it upside down. What have you done to it? I screwed it up. Dear, I... oh, dear. It's not going to be pretty. I just ate his meal, and I'm looking at mine and what I did, and it is. A mess. I'm sorry. Damn, 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 damn. And you've got 20 minutes to go. You should have your Wellingtons in the oven. Oh, my God. Not looking good. Look at Katrina's. Can you see us? Uh, Katrina, what have you done? Show me. My beef wellington, it's oh, not dear, sealed. Oh, dear. I know. I screwed it up. It's not going to be pretty. I'm embarrassed. My Gordon Ramsay beef wellington is a complete disaster. There's tons of holes. I'm sorry. OK, get it in the oven. Let's go. Try and pull this back. Get us great mashed potato, carrots, and a lovely red wine sauce going. Thank you. Don't give up. OK. It's not the prettiest, but it's sealed. Last. 15 minutes, guys. Going in. Got to get your Wellingtons in the oven, otherwise they are not going to cook in time. Nick. Hi, Chef. Will your beef Wellington match Gordon's? If he says that my beef Wellington is really good, my mind's going to explode. That's my goal right now. So you and Carrie both sharing a station, are you both yeah. sort of beef guys, ha. beef cake? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that from you any day. No, you know what? Yeah. Carrie and I kind of have the same goals here. He's here for his daughter. I'm doing the same thing for my whole family. So he drives me and he pushes me to work as hard as possible. Great motivator. Good luck. Good person to share a station oh, with, 100%. Huh? Absolutely. All right, good luck, Nick. Thank you. Oh, look at all the bro love we got going on here, man. Ninety seconds to go. Start plating, guys. Let's please. go, guys. If I was you, I would start plating. This is huge. Come on, guys, please. Well, keep the Wellington hole and keep the sauce in the jug. Oh my gosh. Ten. Oh my gosh. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop! Hands in the air! Yeah. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Oh yes, you look gorgeous, beautiful. Guys, that was intense! <laughs>
<laughs> and probably made a little more stressful knowing that your Gordon Ramsay Beef Wellington dishes are about to be judged by Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> and in case that isn't traumatic enough, there's something else that you need to know. Not all of you will be bringing up your dish. When you sat down for dinner earlier this evening, you were in fact forming your teams. <laughs> you just didn't know it. Only in the MasterChef kitchen. Never think you know what the hell is going on, because you don't. We only want to taste one beef Wellington dish from each pair. That's an important choice, because the two teams with the worst beef Wellington dishes will then have to attempt another Gordon Ramsay dish that's even harder to execute. Your entire fate in this competition rests upon making the correct decision. Oi, like major oi. I automatically am like mine. Face value. I'm gonna go with yours, but let's talk about technique. What did, and you, you, what did you actually do? My only thing that I'm nervous about is my puff pastry. You did a uh, you missed a sear in the sides, right? Yeah. But what was your crepe like? It was kind of thick. I didn't roll mine thin. But Gordon said he really liked my potatoes. Yeah, I think we should take yours. Yeah. Hands down. I had perfect caramelization on my mushrooms. My crepe was almost near perfect. It's better than that. You put wine in your reduction. My only concern then is because your crepe looked beautiful, your potatoes yeah. look good. The meat is the meat. Yours is delicate. Your carrots look nicely glazed. That's yours. You trust me? Mm -hmm. Yes, I trust you. Right. Did you all manage to come to an agreement? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Good. First up, I'm dying to taste. Stephen and Sarah, please, let's go. My beef Wellington, it is beautiful. This 47-year-old urban gardener has cooked a solid Gordon Ramsay dish. I know we made the right decision. Who does this beef Wellington belong to? Is it Sarah's or Stephen's? Stevens. Why did we go with Stevens? Visually, I think his just looked a little bit better. It does look good. The big question is, does it taste as good as it looks? Beautiful. Elegant, rolled nice and tightly, therefore it's cooked evenly. There's no gaps or air, crisp pastry. Beautiful. <laughs> right? Look at my eyes. Is that <laughs> good? Is it? Oh my god. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Come on. Calm down. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's seasoned perfectly, it's rolled to absolute perfection. <laughs> good job. Good job. Well done. Brilliant. Amazing. <laughs> The color on the outside, it's beautiful. I mean, look at that, guys. You see that? Oh, yeah. Right? Earlier on, you guys had a Gordon Ramsay Beef Wellington, but... This is Stephen Lee Beef Wellington. This is the Stephen Lee <laughs> Beef Wellington. It's, it's awesome. It's so good. This gives me hope for the future. <laughs> Sarah, you picked a really good table to sit at. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I like it. Hell to the yeah. I executed Chef Ramsay's Beef Wellington to perfection. Fire is just flaming within me. It feels good. Next up, Hethel and Christopher, please. Let's go. Uh, Hethel, obviously staunch vegetarian. Yeah. Christopher, you're a restaurant manager in a restaurant that cooks the most amazing proteins, right? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about your Wellington. Uh, this is actually Hethel's Wellington, but, uh... What? Yeah. I'm amazed. Uh, Hethel didn't even taste it. He forgot to get his, uh, sauce in the cup. But what about the Wellington? I wish you could taste mine, because I would wager that my Wellington's probably the tastiest here. Really? I was just so scared to serve you an incomplete dish. Just yeah. I want you to forget the sauce. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get back to the heartbeat of tonight's challenge. Go I, and get exactly. it. To, go and get it, please. Hurry up, please. I respect Hethel greatly. I don't want to throw into the bus, but my beef Wellington's amazing. I know my steak is on point inside that Wellington. It's honestly as high caliber as something that I would serve in my restaurant. Oh dear. What is that? Oh my. That's bigger than you. It's like family style. How's that possible? It looks like a cushion from the MasterChef lounge. What have you done? I. Bloody hell. Oh, my goodness me.
Tell me about your Wellington. Uh, this is actually Hethel's Wellington, but, uh... What? I wish you could taste mine, because I would wager that my Wellington's probably the tastiest here. Really? I was just so scared to serve you an incomplete dish. Go and get exactly. it, too. Go and get it, please. Hurry up, please. I'm very disappointed. My sauce is missing, but my Duxelle is perfect. My crepe came out well. My beef is perfect. This is my moment to show myself off. Oh, dear. What is that? Oh, my. That's bigger than you. It's like family style. It looks like a cushion from the MasterChef lounge. I... Where's the steak in here? It's in the middle. I have to, I have to feel for the steak like a landmine. It's in the middle. Yes, sir. You know, like, the potatoes came out good. I know. Bloody Anyways, hell. Yes. Pastry's raw. <sighs> I'm sorry, chef. I really am. So, Heather, tell me about your Wellington. Have you got the layers right? The layers are correct. Good. I know that for sure. I got the puff pastry in. Um, oh, my god. <laughs> I thought it was going to be overcooked. <laughs> I thought it was well, going to be overdone. Beautifully. Oh, my God. It's OK, really... now it just needs to taste good. Is it good? Is it good? No. <gasps> it's <laughs> delicious. <laughs> uh, you've nailed it. It's layered beautifully, seasoned perfectly. That's the best. Vegetarian beef Wellington I've ever eaten. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank, Thank you chef. so much. Amazing. So, I'm confused about you. Yeah, I am. No, no, no. <laughs> it's my turn to talk. Shh, shh. Yeah, but... yeah, exactly. But that, that's the you thing. You wanted that's... us to taste no, this. I wanted. To, if I if I had executed it properly, yes, I would want you to taste it. But I didn't. You said you're not going to get to taste mine just because I left the sauce off. No, that wasn't the only reason. That was something I was. Okay. I got Here's it. the thing. I'm sorry. To be quite frank. You're that guy that has so much to say, but you haven't been able to put it on a plate, and you gotta get your technique and your skill up before you can start running your mouth. Will you make eye contact with me? Yeah, sorry. That's like the most supportive real talk I can give you. Absolutely, I understand. Okay. Great flavor on that beef. It's clear that you really studied the Wellington, and you did a really nice job. Christopher, give her all of the credit. She's carrying you in this challenge. Correct. She's wonderful. OK. Thank you, Shane. Thank you. Good job, Hethel. I'm feeling very confident that we're safe. Hethel really impressed me. Her Wellington was perfect. I'm so proud of you. I knew you could do it. From now on, I just need to keep my mouth shut and execute. Next up, please, Derek and Katrina. So first off, whose beef Wellington did you guys decide to serve? No, it's mine. Do you think this is good enough? Does it do it justice? I did trim it so it's not the size of a mattress, and I got all the steps, mushroom, prosciutto, the filet, and in the oven. Katrina, your life is in his hands. Steak is slightly over, more towards medium. Looking at the space in between there, I can holler and get a big echo back. Did you get the mustard on there? I missed the mustard. Which means I'm going to miss the mustard now. Yeah. Steaks season well, but definitely crying out for that Dijon. I would be nervous at this point, Katrina. Next up, Nick and Kerry. Let's go. Who does this Wellington belong to? We went with Nick's because it's more uniform. Uh, his pastry looks a lot better on his Wellington. It's rolled nice and tightly. You can see the Duxelle, slightly too thick with the pastry. Yeah. What is this here? That's the crepe, That's the crepe, yeah. Those should be wafer thin. Yeah. That's a shame. How does it taste? It should taste delicious. I'm struggling to identify the heat. How much mustard do you put on this? On mine, none. I forgot it. You forgot the mustard? Yeah. Damn. It needs that Dijon mustard to give it that liveliness and cut down the earthiness of the steak. That's a letdown for me. Thank you. Sorry, dude. Oh, All right. No apologies. Next up, Shelly and Olivia. All right. Whose beef wellington is this? This is mine. Why did you decide to choose Olivia's over yours? The dish, aesthetically, it looked better. There's some color on here, which may equate to an overbaked filet. We'll have to take a peek. Mm. It's a little less pink than 
one of the other beef wellingtons that we have particularly enjoyed tonight. Mm -hmm. You can see under here the uneven pastry on the side. Your carrots are definitely over. Okay. Yeah. Your potato puree is fine, but it's clear that you struggled a little bit in the assembly of the Wellington. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. All right, last up, Tommy and Claudia. I really hope that we have made the right decision, given the fact that I've never made a beef wellington. Let's just pray that it all comes together. Tell me whose beef wellington is in front of me. This is my beef wellington. This is your beef wellington. Yes. Pretty presentation. How long did you bake in the oven? About 13 to 14 minutes, roughly. I'm hoping that it comes through when you slice in there. It's nice and flaky still. No big holes. Moment of truth. Beautiful. But we all know looks are clearly not everything. That's delicious. Great use of season. The best thing about this is the mushrooms. They're nice and earthy, like of the forest floor. I've had this dish numerous times at Gordon's restaurants. This is a really delicious example. Thank you. Claudia, you are now a real contender in this competition. Thank you, Chef. All right. The skies have parted. I cannot believe I nailed this dish. I can really get used to this. Uh, well done, all of you. Please make your way down to the front. Thank you. Tonight, that was a really tough challenge. Three teams out of the six really excelled. Sarah and Stephen stepped forward. Hethel and Christopher stepped forward. Tommy and Claudia step forward. Clearly, without a doubt, all six of you, all safe. Head up to the balcony. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job. You three teams of two, the Beef Wellingtons that you presented fell short. We have to decide which two teams of two will go into the dreaded pressure test and have to replicate an even harder Gordon Ramsay dish. Shelly and Olivia, please step forward. You made mistakes tonight, some pretty big mistakes. I feel awful. Shelly and I are in this situation because of me. I am angry at myself, and I'm just sure that we are going to the pressure test. You presented Olivia's Beef Wellington. I'm not sure if Shelly's would have been stronger. We'll never know. What I do know is you are both Shelly and Olivia, you made mistakes tonight. Some pretty big mistakes. You presented Olivia's Beef Wellington. I'm not sure if Shelly's would have been stronger. We'll never know. But what I do know is you are both safe. Please head up to the balcony. Thank you, Shelly. So, Derek, Katrina, Nick, and Carrie, at least one of you will be leaving after this next challenge. All four of you have to attempt another Gordon Ramsay dish that's even harder to execute. This is not going to be easy. Focus, watch, and miss nothing. All four of you, follow me. You guys walk down as well. Let's go. I'm faced with this daunting challenge that I really don't know what it is yet. And if it's harder than the Beef Wellington, there's no room for error. Right, all four of you watch carefully. One of my favorite appetizers it's on the menu of my flagship restaurant in Chelsea, where we have three Michelin stars. Oh, these are life scallops. It's a pan seared scallop with quail's eggs, pea puree, truffles, and crispy pancetta. The elements are simple, but the techniques are difficult. Got me? Yes, yes sir. Hold the scallop nice and firmly in the hand, and then keep the knife tilted, running up against the shell. And then lift off. From there, just use the spoon. There's the scallop. Your thumb goes in, and you gently wedge that out and pop the scallop out. Take your quail egg. Tap. 
nice and gently. Be careful that you do not break the yoke. Oh, it's amazing watching him work. Everyone on the balcony should be jealous right now because this is where you live in this challenge. Skull up season from a distance. Watching Chef Ramsay cook is like poetry in motion. Skull up in, start at 12 o'clock. It's beauty, it's majestic, it's like nature. He's mastered space and time. Parmesan in, fresh chives over that. Now we put it together. PPOA down. Scallops, take your quails out. Gently sit them on top. Chef's dream. Take your bacon. Peas in between the bacon. Pea tendrils, slicing truffle. The thinner the slice, the more fragrant the truffle. Delicious. Magic. There you have it. Beautiful. Hand seared scallops with a fresh minty pea puree. Crispy pancetta and quail's eggs. That was so incredible. Time to head to your stations. You have to be confident. That's what I'm learning. But I've only made scallops once in my life. How am I going to do this? Notice that you have your black aprons in front of you. Please put them on. And one more thing. You guys will get exactly three scallops, three quail eggs, and three pancetta. So your margin for error is Zero. Everyone will get 30 minutes to make an exact replica of my dish. Is everybody ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your 30 minutes starts now. Let's go. Well wow. Wow. So you were able to get that demo done in 15 minutes. They have 30. You make it look easy, but that's intense. Definitely. It's challenges like this that separates the chefs yeah. from the cooks. Yeah. This is a tough one. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, Katrina. Now, there's a lot of garnish. The quail's egg, the pancetta, mm -hmm. the pea puree. But the hero tonight, guys, are the scallops. Shucking them, separating them from the skirt. Mm -hmm. And understanding that, cooking them perfectly mm -hmm. is the art. There we go. There we go. Nick, you, you got it. it. You got it. it. Right, Nick, how you doing? Feeling the pressure right now. The most nerve wracking part is failing. You can do this, right? There we go. Beautiful. Yes. Scallop open nicely. Have you ever worked with live scallops before? I've never worked with live scallops before. Who's vulnerable? I think everybody's vulnerable. This is a difficult dish. There's a lot on the line. Well, at least one person's going home. It ain't gonna be me. Nick, yes, 22 sir. minutes to get it together. Good luck. Thanks, Chef. Let's go. So, Carrie, have you worked with scallops before? Never, sir. Who do you think's got the least experience? Me. If I was a fly in the corner watching this competition, I would mm -hmm. say that I was the person probably most likely to go home. But since I'm not a fly on the wall and I'm a man fighting for my life, right. I'm going to be here. Good luck. Thank you very much. 15 minutes to go. Move, guys. Let's go. Put your bacon in there. Eric, how you looking? Pretty how good. How do scallops go? Definitely a tough thing to do. How are you feeling about being in the challenge? Do you feel responsible you know for Katrina being in the challenge? At the end of the day, uh, if she was confident about her dish, I would have said, I'm a team player. I'll go with you. Let's do it. Be confident. You are looking confident. Looking forward to see what you pull together. Thank you, Chef. Yep. Nick, keep it going. Keep it going. Katrina, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, scallops out of the shell, beautifully done. Thank you. Feeling confident? I don't know. I want to see that confidence. I want to see that Katrina, the one that's going to go on and win this competition. I want to see that girl back. What's the one element you're really nervous about? Cracking those eggs. You have to do it very, very gently. Don't drop it up, go down into the pan, almost like your tips or your fingers are in that butter. Okay. Good luck. Thank you so much. Keep going, Gary. You're doing great, brother. So who are you guys worried about? I'm nervous about Katrina because there's a lot of finesse in this dish. Yeah, I'm worried about Nick. He's got that big tough guy man quality. When you go to like, open a quail egg, yeah. it's so delicate. Gentle hands. Cracking a quail egg, as fragile as that, it's like lifting a filament oh. of a light bulb. Woo! Good job. There you go, Nick. Too much pressure, you crack the outside, bang, your yolk's gone. <sighs> the broken egg. Oh. No. Katrina's broken one of the yolks. There's no safety net if you ruin it. There's no way back. Oh, f me. I'm totally screwed. 
I had just one shot to get this right. I feel like Humpty Dumpty. I couldn't put the pieces back together. <laughs>
a hard challenge and one that I think definitely got the better of you. did your 30 minutes treat you? It flew by. No excuses, bad time management on my part. I'm missing more than I have. Everything else is pretty much done. I just didn't get it on the So the other components from Gordon's dish are on your station? And pretty much everything else. Got the eggs done, the vinaigrette done, the peas done. Just could not represent that. Tell me what did make it on the plate. All right, uh, one dollop of pea puree, three strips of crispy pancetta, and what I think to be a decently seared scallop. Pretty nice, even sear on both sides of the scallop. The pancetta you did a really nice job with, but there are so many elements missing from the plate. We're turning a corner in this competition. It's getting tougher and tougher. It's our job as judges to try and figure out who's fit for the challenge and who's rising as we raise the bar. Just looking up and down at the other home-cooked dishes, in your heart of hearts, do you feel like your time is up in the MasterChef kitchen? Just looking up and down at the other home cooked dishes, in your heart of hearts, do you feel like your time is up in the MasterChef kitchen? I mean, I was holding out hope until the last moment that I could get everything on there. I had a good sear on my scallops. I mean, Katrina didn't have so much of a sear, but she got more elements on the plate. It looked yeah. a lot closer to the actual replication of the dish, so. I know. Taking those two things into consideration. Do <sighs> you think we should send you home? Do I feel that way? Absolutely not. Completely disappointed. I didn't leave myself enough time to get all the elements on the plate, but I'm still feeling some hope because, you know, the things that I did get on the plate were cooked well, and the judges don't seem happy with any of the elements that Katrina did get on the plate. We'll have to see. Nick. So, visually, uh, Nick, I'm going to be honest, it looks gorgeous. Thank you, sir. It's got the finesse, it's got the color. Uh, you have nailed the closest plate to my demonstration. Thank you. Three perfectly cooked quail's eggs, cut, trimmed beautifully. I look at your eggs and I look at Katrina's eggs, and wow, it's night and day. Truffle on, fragrant, uh, peas on. How do you cook the pea puree? Boil the peas with mint, a lot of salt, and pepper. Smart. Great sear in the scallops. Slightly opaque in the center. Got the acidity. Nick, it's a really good effort. You didn't buckle under pressure, you rose. I think that's one of your best dishes you've ever done so far in this competition. Seriously impressed. Wow, thank you. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> Derek, Katrina, Kerry and Nick, we need a moment to discuss. Excuse us. So, two really bad, yeah. one middle of the road mm -hmm. and one stand out. Katrina yep. put more on the plate, right? But if you look at Katrina's scallops and you look at Kerry's scallops, at least Kerry had a sear. I mean, it's not as simple as you think. Are you happy? Happy? Mm -hmm. Tonight, we asked four home cooks to operate almost as though they were part of Gordon's brigade at his three Michelin starred restaurant. One of you didn't trip at all. Please step forward, Nick. Woo! Nick, you were inspirational across those 30 minutes. You're getting stronger, better, but just evolving. Great job. Head upstairs. Brilliant. I had a rough beef wellington, so it feels good to be back up on top. What I did today is a sign of what's to come. Top 10, I'm on my way. Derek, Katrina, Kerry, tough on this one. One of you has reached the end of your MasterChef journey. Based on these plates that you've just produced in the last 30 minutes and those plates alone, that person struggled tonight in terms of the final composition of the plates. Please step forward. Kerry.
Katrina, Derek, head upstairs. You do good. You're really crying. I'm here. We'll be in touch. Kerry, yes. you are an inspiration, not only to us, but to everybody on that balcony and your daughter. If there's one thing that you've always been across all these challenges, it is organised. Unfortunately, timing was your worst ingredient tonight. Everything else you cooked beautifully was sat behind you. And sadly, you did put up the weakest dish. Please take your apron off, place it on your bench, and say good night. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Safe trip back. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. I love you guys. Good night, awesome, man. I'm feeling bummed right now. My win streak is officially over. But I'm leaving today as a stronger cook, a stronger chef. I came here with a passion for food, and now I know that I've got the chops for this. Yeah. Being on MasterChef, cooking for Christina, Graham, Gordon, has changed my life already. This is you, like, taking a step up in the right direction. Really awesome to see you push forward. Thank Good you job. so much. I'm really proud of being undefeated in team challenges. I was the captain of one, which was very big for me. I really feel like I can now go home knowing that my daughter will be very proud of me. All right, Gary. Next time on MasterChef. Please, be careful. A mystery box challenge oh, packed full of surprises. Rice, rice, baby. Woo. And the elimination test Woo. has an early favorite on the run. Can I borrow this? I got to use it. I need it all. Talk to you later. Oh, girl, how could you forget the two main ingredients? All ending in a shocking elimination. Ugh. That's hard to stomach. It is repulsive. Oh, my God. One potato, two potato.